all teaching to some extent teaches yes it is knowledge and right from my days as a young student I was always very interested in um, research and especially the truth. When I trained in orthodontics I soon found that there was a lot of uncertainty. They didn't really know what caused malocclusion and I thought it really rather wrong that you should be treating a problem if you're not sure what causes it. And I'm very sad to say I believe the same still applies. Most orthodontists don't know what causes the condition they're treating. Um, anyway, I started off with my research and I developed a technique which I thought explained malocclusion better and also got better results. Naturally, I wanted to demonstrate this. And so in 1972, I approached the British Association of Orthodontists, of which I was a member, and said to them, look, I think we need to do some comparative research. That is much better than researching this and seeing how good it is, and researching that and seeing how good it is. I wanted to have 20 cases treated by my method, 20 cases treated by a number of different methods. And I felt that that was much the best way of seeing what actually worked, apart from all of the ideas and theories. Um, so I went to a considerable extent to try and get this organised. The BAO actually gave its approval. I wrote to um, a professor at various universities and I spent, I sent out, I think, about 30 letters to various different universities and groups of orthodontists. To my surprise, almost amazement, not one was willing to do any comparative research. I had suggested um, doing 20 cases, but they said malocclusion is so varied and so many types that you really need to have a hundred or more cases to compare before you can come up with an answer. Now, that was quite impossible for me because of course I was just a small time practitioner. Um, but um, it became really an obstruction between me and the orthodontists. And I wrote to, uh, to a huge number of different authorities trying to plead with them to intercede to try and help get some sort of comparison going. But the orthodontists became more and more aware I think, of what I was trying to do, and more and more resistant to taking part in any comparison at all. Now, eventually, in 19, I think it was 98, I treated a young girl, and the treatment went nicely, and her mother happened to be a reporter. And when I told her that the orthodontists were refusing to even consider this method, she was horrified. And she set up um, a BBC program. And on the program, I said, um, which is what I believe, that about 20% um, of bases are quite badly damaged as a result of orthodontics, and about a further, further 30%, making 50% in all, were um, slightly damaged. An actual fact, I believe more faces are damaged by orthodontics than that, but that's um, another matter. I've never been able to prove it. But this um, program excited a huge response around the country. I remember that about five of the national dailies put a full page um, on either the front or inside of their um, editions. And as a result, the orthodontists were very, very angry with me. And even the dentists were saying that I shouldn't have said that. But in my view, I should have said it. It was absolutely true, and the orthodontists were disguising the fact that there is a lot of damage done to the appearance of the face during normal orthodontic treatment, certainly if teeth are taken out. 
Now, um, the existing orthodontic treatments, nearly all, cause the face to go back. It's what they call retractive treatment. If the teeth are sticking out, they pull them back. Now, our treatment, if the teeth are sticking out, we usually take the lower jaw forward and then upright the teeth like that. So you have a lovely forward-growing face. And that, without doubt, looks much better. But, of course, I was getting no chance of, of showing this. But um, the, the whole method of orthodontics was... I felt a mechanical one. It was developed um, back in the early part of the 19th century by a gentleman called Edward Angle. He had very good ideas um, and he developed what they now call fixed appliances where you glue a bracket onto every tooth and then uh, uh, line all the teeth up. Um, he strongly believes you should never take teeth out, as that tended to damage the face. But one of his students was a chap called Charles Tweed, and he felt um, it was impossible to make room for all the teeth in all the patients. So he started taking um, teeth out. In fact, he used to take out one premolar each side on the top and bottom, and his treatment became known as four on the floor, referring to the four teeth which were extracted. Anyway, um, otherwise, Angle was saying that you shouldn't take teeth out and that the tongue and lips um, would control the teeth and Charles Tweed was giving a very different method. However, I came across a piece of writing of his in a few years before he retired, and he had completely changed his mind. He was then saying, in his later age, um, he was saying that um, you should treat when the patients are very young, you should never take any teeth out and you should try and um, correct the posture of the tongue and the jaws, um, which is exactly what I believe now. Now, it, it is really um, the fact that orthodontists, I believe, are treating the symptoms of crooked teeth, the actual irregular teeth. They're saying, this is the problem, we must straighten them. They're not looking into the reason why the teeth are crooked. And so um, they tend to use these mechanical methods, which I don't support. Well, I think the best thing is to treat early while the child is growing and ensure that the jaws grow correctly.